Hello and welcome to the 11th video in this series making Simple Flappy Robin using Kogos 2 dx version 3 for Android. So this video then we're going to look at getting the Robin to actually collide with the tubes. Now before we do that I just want to quickly respond to a question that was in the comments. Uh, someone asked where are we, where are we, where are we about some of the code here. Well we've got the start and the stop clouds function. The reason why when the game was over this code was in here. Well, first of all, this code here is basically a C++11. I think it's, it came in in C++11 anyway. I'm not an aficionado. It's just a shortcut for a for loop. It's there instead of writing for uh, cloud pointer to cloud equal to clouds begin whilst it's less than clouds end plus plus cloud. This is just a shortcut for a for loop giving us a pointer to each object inside our clouds array. It also prevents us having to then cast the object inside uh, our clouds array if necessary and things like that, although this is a, a vector in this case. But it's a simply a shortcut for using an iterator to go through our vector. So what we're doing is, when we get to game over, just going here, uh, let me find it, here it is. So when the robin goes off the bottom of the floor, we call this stop clouds. This does two things. One, it calls stop on our clouds. And in our cloud class, stop simply stops all actions. You remember these objects, once start is called, basically infinitely flow left to right across the screen. And when they go off the screen, off the left to reach their destination, they're set back to the right hand side of the screen and set going again. And they continuously do this until stop is called, in which case we call stop all actions, which makes them stand still. When the game is then restarted, start is called and they are simply set moving again. So that's the reason then that we have uh, the code disappeared. Where is it? Uh, that's the reason then when we call stop clouds, so when the robin has hit the floor, we call stop. That stops these dead. We call stop all actions on the tube for exactly the same effect, uh, in the sense that we want the tubes to stand still. When the game starts, we call this start clouds, and that comes here in on touch began. If the game over is in a true state, so the game was over, then we call start clouds. And what this does is, again, loops through all of the clouds in our array and calls start, which as I've just said, sets them on their infinite scrolling left to right. But it looks a bit funny maybe to call this stop on the tubes, and it's a little bit, uh, maybe we should call it a start in some way, but it's a little bit confusing me in the class itself, so it's called a stop. And what the stop actually does in the tube class is it makes the tube invisible, sets its state to inactive, and also moves it way off the left of the screen at this equivalent of a thousand pixels, x to the left of the screen, and sets score to false. And what the tube does then is it waits, and you remember that when it comes to actually spawning a tube, we have to get a tube to be able to spawn, so we call get next tube. And the first thing we do is loop through all of the tubes we've already got inside our vector. And if the state is inactive, we return that tube. So when the game first starts, all of the tubes have this stop called, and therefore they are set to inactive, which means that they're ready to be used rather than creating a new tube object and adding it to the vector. And what happens is, once we've got that tube, we then spawn that tube, and then start is called on that tube, which then sets it moving, and when it goes off the left-hand side of the screen, reached its destination, and stop is called, which goes through all of that again, and makes it available for the next tubes that need to be spawned. So that's why it's done in, in that manner. The stop basically resets them off to the left-hand side of the screen, and in fact I could just as well have called this actually reset instead of stop. Okay then, so what we're going to do in this video, in this video we're going to have a little look at collisions. So if I just run the application at the moment, we want to make the robin collide with the tubes, but the problem we have at the moment is when the robin dies, it instantly resets to the middle of the screen, which isn't very good for actually looking at uh, collisions. We want it to stay where the collision took place. Now, later on in the application, we'll neaten everything up anyway. When it dies, there'll be a pause, a label saying game over, and after a couple of seconds, everything will reset to start. For now, we're going to do a little bit of a hack in the code just so that we can at least uh, see things okay. So at the moment we have inside the robin here reset, it's set to state stopped, start speed is set, um, but what we're actually going to do is just comment out this 
setting of its position here and we'll actually set the robin's position I'll just copy this code actually when we actually start the game uh, inside hello world scene so if I just find the touch function wherever it is here we are this is where we effectively do the starting of the game so what we'll do is we'll just take the visible size and then we'll just say robin and set position like so which sets the robin back so now the effect should be when I run the application that he sits where he is when he dies okay he's down in the bottom left yes and the robin now stays there until we touch and carry on the game okay when the application very first starts up he's down in the bottom left but it doesn't really matter the point is I want to show the collisions okay so dealing with the collisions at the moment we've got a function at the bottom of our class for the robin saying tube collision box and this is a rectangle that we're going to use to detect the collision and the way we're going to do this is we're going to simply take the rectangle surrounding our robin and see if this intersects one of the tube rectangles. Now the tube rectangle bounding box is essentially as wide as the widest part of the tube and as tall as the tube here. You imagine a rectangle covering that and the robin bounding box is the left handmost point is the tip of the tail, right hand uh, tip of the beak, tip of the hair, tip of the feet. So you imagine a box around there. It should already be popping into your mind that if we do a collision between the tube's box and the robin's box we're going to get some stuff that looks like the robin hasn't actually hit the tube and in fact that is the case but I want to show that before we then go on modifying that tube collision box a little bit to make the collision look a little better. So into this game update then we need to find a way of uh, making a game over situation not only for the floor but also for colliding with a tube. So the first thing we want to do is neaten up the logic a little bit in here and what we're going to say is we're going to say that if game over is equal to false so when we come out of our checks for whether the robin has hit a tube or hit the floor if it's not true then we'll update our robin here otherwise we'll call the game over uh, sorry the reset and the stop clouds inside here and now we can take this out of the else here and inside here we'll do our collision detection so just running through the logic there we do our spawning we just set the game over flag if the robins hit the floor and then here we'll check if the flag is set and then we need the game over it just stops us repeating this code the thing I do need though is the loop code to loop through all of our tubes so I'm just going to copy this one here and go in here and now for each of our tubes what we can say is that if our robin and it's called its tube collision box and there's an intersects rect and then we can say tube and bounding box then we'll set game over to true because and we can also break from that loop already because the robin has collided with the tube so now if I just run this now what we should see is some very dodging uh, or are some very dodgy looking collisions with the robin so just start the application running and there you can see that the robins now collided with the tube there's a real distinct gap between the the robin and the tube I just won't do one more I should really have sped the tubes up a bit so that I don't have to wait so long for them to come across the screen that by the way we might modify anyway they seem to be taking too long I'm not sure where they are to the right hand side of the screen but I'm wondering if I haven't got a little bug in there let's see if we can just get the tail to collide oh they click too quickly just try again and there you go it's detected a collision because the edge of the box here is just probably on the tip of the tube and obviously that's nowhere near a collision so that means we need to modify the bounding box of our robin and the way we're going to do this is the first thing you might think of is we just reduce the width and the height of our bounding box by a certain amount but the problem with that is is the bounding box origin is around here where the mouse is and the width is up to uh, sorry the height is up to here and the width obviously across to here making this box if I reduce the width though 
the origin still stays the same. So even if I made the bounding box half well, hit width and height, it would go from here up to the tail and come out down about here. So we would still have this area here colliding and nothing where the eye is or anything colliding. So you need to remember to do two things. One is to shift the origin to the right, so a plus in the X and upwards a plus in the Y, and then reduce the width by a corresponding amount. And what I've found is, is that we need to shift around 25 pixels to the right to take out the tail, we shift up about 5 pixels to take out the feet. Uh, for the width overall, we want to take off about maybe about um, 35, so another 10 pixels for the beak. And we want maybe another 10 pixels for the hair as well. So we reduce the total width by 35 and the total height by about 15. That's what I found in the Cocos 2DX version 2 uh, version of this app series that I did anyway. And that makes the collision detection actually look reasonably good. If you want to do this collision detection exactly for the tubes, the first step you would do is you would take this rectangle, and if you search on Google, a circle colliding with a rectangle, so you would say, take the circle of the robin, its size there, so from its position, its centre point, just take the circle, and then what you do is you then rotate the rectangle of this in the direction of the circle and then there's a formula for actually seeing if the circle intersects with the rectangle at all. We're not going to do that in this series, there's no point, it's too involved, you can find it on Google. Um, it, it actually plays reasonably enough cheating in the, the way I'm going to do. So enough going on, we're going to return then a rect and inside this rect then we can add in our parameters. So we make this out of then the bounding box dot uh, origin dot x and then what we'll do is we'll say like I said plus and you have to remember for the scale y here that's critical because everything to do with tubes and robins and stuff is scaled in the y times get scale factor and I just copy this once and again and then we want the y and this time we're just moving the origin along by five to take out the feet and now we want the size and the width And here we want the width reduced by 35. We've already moved along 25, remember, but we want another 10 off to take out the beak. And last but not least, the height. Then we want 15, so a 10 off to take out the hair. And this meant, went much cleaner than the version 2 of Cocos 2DX because I made a right hash of that until somebody pointed it out in the comments for me. So that's then the tube collision rectangle. So now if I run the application again, things should look a little bit better in terms of the collision with the robin. I've just realized actually I need a minus here to reduce the uh, width and the height, not a plus. So just run the application and hopefully now the uh, scaling or the returning of this collision box should make the collisions look a lot more realistic. The robin, by the way, if you're wondering where it is, remember, is down at the bottom left corner because I haven't set the position in the initialization. We'll clean all that up when we come to deal with the labels and game over and stuff. So let's have a look at where this now collides. And now you can see that the robin's actually colliding in a much better way with the tube. It has indeed hit the edge of the tube. Um, I'll just try to see if I can get one that had sort of this um, upper right portion of the robin or indeed the uh, the tail colliding as well. And there you can see, although it's overlapping somewhat on the tube, that's a much better version than having a gap. And my, uh, and my experience would be, also as a player myself, I wouldn't mind seeing a collision like this. There's a bit of leeway. But what you don't want to see is blue sky between the tube and the robin because you'll just feel absolutely cheated. So the collision is definitely working a little bit better now. It's not perfect by any means, um, but it makes the play or the perception uh, for the player anyway already a lot better about playing the game, stops them feeling like, there you see the tail clearly passed through the tube and there as well. So the collision is looking a lot better and now you can see the hair is okay but then it collides with the with the top of the head. Okay, so I'll stop playing around that with, uh, with that then. That's uh, it for this video. Uh, I've managed to somehow cover 15 minutes when I thought it would be about five. Um, 
or nearly 15 minutes anyway, I had to chop a tiny bit out. Um, but yes, that's the collision. And what we can move on to now is actually looking at having uh, some sound effects in the game. So we play some sounds. But before that, actually, I think we ought to start setting up the logic now so that we have a label appear with game over at least and sort of a bit of better restarting and, and, and stuff like that. So it cleans the interface up a little bit. So thanks very much for watching. Hope it's all made some sense. And comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.